What's up NZers and welcome back to another reaction video. Today we're going to be checking out something that is, ooh, it's quite scary. And quite unsuitable for the kids. Yeah, I'd say so. Yeah. Uh, creepiest towns, the top 10 creepiest small towns in America. This is giving me Mr. Bolin vibes. Yeah, totally. Or just like horror movie vibes in oh. general. You know, that's where they like get all their uh, inspiration from for the do horror movies. Do we really want to see this just before we go? <laughs> I think we should do it. Oh. Let's freak ourselves out. Okay. You ready? Yeah. Okay. Warning, PSA. Stay away from these small towns at all costs. Okay. Okay. We promise we We've will. We've all been to that one rundown town <coughs> where the Whoa. vibe just seemed off. Not the people me. are strange and there's this weird feeling in the air. There are a lot of creepy towns in America, especially once you get into the more rural areas. But most don't compare to these. You really should avoid going to any of these places unless you absolutely have to. Some have a dark history and are reportedly haunted by ghosts if you believe in that stuff. And if you don't, well, the paranormal honestly would seem like pleasant company compared to the residents of some of these towns. From okay. abandoned buildings to cults and drugs to gruesome murders, darkness and oddities loom throughout their streets. The following places really should be avoided at all costs. But if you're a crazy adventurer wanting to ignore my warnings, or just interested in seeing how strange America can be, then be sure to listen to my top 10 crazy. I'm glad we're watching this because then we'll know where not to go. That's true. You gotta heed the warning. Yeah. Number 10, Whittier, Alaska. How would you feel if your entire city lived, worked, and spent their free time in the same building? What if they never left? What? Well, what? that's life for the 208 residents living in the small port town of Whittier, Alaska. The only way you can escape or enter one if building. you dare is by boat or through a single highly regulated one lane tunnel. It closes often and unexpectedly. Oh. When it is open, you're only allowed to enter every half hour. Fortunately, oh. you don't need to go through the inconvenience of leaving your building since this single 14-story structure, Bagich Towers, has everything a wow, town can need from a grocery store to a post office to apartments you can call home, all in the same building. You really do Not never bad. need to leave, and most people don't during the winter. Just Ooh. imagine the isolation. Oh. What's even oh. more unsettling is that although the people have lived this way for generations, this is actually a new building. But the old building they all used to live in is still Ooh. there too. On a hill, dilapidated, crumbling, and fenced off. Never to be entered. Yeah, that's not Outside good. Outside of Begitch wow. Towers, the town just seems barren, oh. abandoned, <clears throat> and creepy. While cruise ships do come through here in the summer, wow. very few visitors make the trek during the winter, when the town stays dark for over 18 hours a day, for making you feel incredibly lonely wow. and isolated. Emphasis on ice. Point Pleasant, <laughs> West Virginia. Upon arrival, it isn't hard to see why the town's most infamous citizen, the creepy humanoid moth-like figure known as Mothman, called Point Pleasant home. They're no one statue knows who or what he was, but his supposed flights over the streets during the 1960s are only a recent occurrence in a town deeply rooted in darkness. It all began on the 10th of October, 1774. The Shawnee tribe bravely fought the new American settlers for the land that they both called home. The Americans <coughs> barely managed to overcome the tactics of the Shawnee chief Cornstock. Eventually, Cornstock, his son, and close friends came to negotiate with the Americans in an effort to avoid future battles. But the Americans captured and executed them all. Just before he died, Cornstock called upon the Great Spirit to curse the land for 200 years as vengeance for the injustice done to him and his people. Whether you believe in curses or not, two devastating floods ruined the town followed by a destructive fire. Later, an airplane carrying the Marshall University football team and their coach tragically crashed here as well, killing all 75 people on board. In 1967, the silver bridge which connected the town to Ohio collapsed killing 46. Wow. Then, in 1978, a freight train derailed and spilled toxic chemicals into the city's water supply. Okay. Not to mention the apparent men in black and UFO activity in the area. The town is even cursed by a name it could never live up to. If you visit Point Pleasant today, you'll definitely feel something strange in the air. And it's not just Mothman. The real mystery is, why do people keep living here? Because <laughs> of everything that's happened, true. Iowa. 
On the surface, Villisca <coughs> looks like your normal, quiet, small Midwest town. But that only makes everything that I'm about to tell you even creepier. Over a hundred years ago, the Villisca Axe murders in 1912 traumatized the town which hasn't recovered since. The murders took place between the evening of June 10th and early morning June 11th, 1912, when eight people were discovered dead at Josiah and Sarah Moore's house. The six members of the Moore family and their two house guests were found bludgeoned. Even the four children had severe head wounds from an axe. What? Although a lengthy investigation yielded several suspects, one of whom was tried twice, the crime remains unsolved. Wow. An air of uneasiness envelops the town today. Perhaps because That's its residents insane. never quite felt safe, knowing a ruthless murderer freely roamed their streets. Today the town is run down, and although tourists can spend the night in the Moore house, I don't know why anyone would want to. One traveler who passed through oh. here accounts... It did feel eerie, and I felt unwelcome. Even the flies were more annoying there. Perhaps that's why no civilization settled nearby. Even though there are 1,200 people currently living in the town, the nearest restaurant or grocery store other than their gas station is 15 miles away. Wow. Number seven, Sheesh. Centralia, Pennsylvania. Centralia has been on fire for decades. Yes, you heard me right on fire. The blaze began in 1962 with a trash fire in a strip mine beneath the town. That unassuming little flame ignited an eternal hellish blaze. It burns underground to this day, and each Whoa. year it grows by 75 feet in every direction. The what? town has been barricaded from the outside to prevent people from driving onto the collapsing roads, which are a danger even on foot. Sinkholes constantly and randomly appear, eager to swallow unsuspecting victims. Wow. Or in sinkholes, there are random spurts of smoke that can kill you upon inhaling the fumes. This one might sound like something out of a video game or horror movie, and well, that's because it is. The Silent Hill franchise is based on this town, and it's a tragic story. The population of once 3,000 residents has now decreased to just 10 according to the last U.S. Census. But nobody knows if those people. 10 people still live in the death trap today. Of the 400 to 500 buildings that once stood in this flourishing town, only five remain. And I honestly don't know why anyone would want to still live here. I mean, just look at the place. So they just keep burning Number up. Six. So Broadhead, weird. Wisconsin. Broadhead is a town <clears throat> haunted by many dark and twisted tales. The first known haunting began after two men brutally murdered a helpless woman whose ghost supposedly now roams the bridge that she died on. And that isn't the only tragedy that darkens the city. A fire claimed the life of a little girl who apparently now haunts the building she burned to death in. As if that isn't bad enough, Broadhead residents have recounted numerous haunting encounters with various ghosts all over <laughs> the town. Perhaps because of another tragedy that happened at what is now called Hell's Playground, where children were murdered right by now. a mentally ill man. Many reports of eeriness and even the faint sound of children chanting have been made. And even if you don't believe in ghosts, the town here still feels creepy, perhaps in part due to the old decaying architecture mixed with extremely religious people and lots of meth addiction. Broadhead just isn't a pleasant place to go through. Oof. Number five, Cairo, Illinois. This once booming metropolis sits Whoa. conveniently at the confluence of the Mississippi and Ohio rivers. The amazing location brought it great economic success in the early 20th century, but eventually also became its demise. The Great Mississippi Flood of 1927 Whoa. amassed tragedy here, and soon thereafter, many who once called it home eagerly left once rivers were no longer necessary for trade. It quickly became a ghost town. Whoa. The population has been reduced to a mere 3,000 residents. Those who remain live amongst the corroding ruins of what was once a great city, now overgrown with weeds. What's even worse is that it's a town ruined by its own hate and spite. Many white-owned businesses chose to go out of business instead of integrating during the civil rights movement. And even as recently Whoa. as 1967, lynchings were held here. It's no wonder so many were quick to abandon the town. Crime runs rampant here, and just walking through the streets honestly feels like something out of The Walking Dead. Yeah. Number four, wow. Antelope, Oregon. Ah, uh, Oregon. Drive about 20 minutes outside of any city mm. and you're guaranteed to find some total weirdness. I mean, this thing, the Temple of Oculus Anubis, is just outside of Portland. But out of all Oregon's cultish, creepy, and strange towns, Antelope <laughs> is by far the creepiest. What? I mean, the people here live with actual deer on their porches. That's a major weird red flag. But maybe they just didn't get the memo since they don't Not have any modern technology or much communication with the outside world at all. Now, you're
you're probably wondering the same thing I was. Why do these people live with deer? Well, in 1981, a mystic guru guy from India known as Bhagwan Sri Rajneesh oh. bought 65,000 acres of land just the next, 18 the Netflix miles documentary. Yeah. antelope. And let me tell you, Oregon had no idea what was coming. Yeah. It wasn't long before thousands of his followers had infiltrated the town of Antelope oh, with their yeah. wow. ideals and eventually even voted to rename the town after Rajneesh. That's but taking right. over Antelope wasn't enough. Members of the cult began poisoning everything from restaurant salad bars to water supplies of nearby towns and even Portland and Salem. They also tried to murder Psychos. several public officials. A global manhunt eventually collapsed the cultic commune, but needless to say, the town of Antelope never quite recovered. It's a ghost town full of decaying empty storefronts. Only 49 people remain here as of the last U.S. Census. Many Whoa. resiliently still following their cultic ways, what? living with their deer. <laughs> Number three. Colorado City, Arizona. The misleading name isn't half as misleading as the beliefs of the fundamentalist Mormon cult gone rogue that lives here. It all started when Warren Jeffs, a leader of the church, convinced followers in this desert town that technology was satanic and everyone outside of their cult was possessed by Satan. So members of this cult needed to keep their bloodlines pure and only marry within the commune. Eventually, Jeffs was arrested for child molestation, but his ideals remain in the town. What a surprise. Though the rest of the world has moved on, Colorado City is stuck in the 1800s. From their traditional clothing to lack oh, wow. of technology and extreme hostility toward visitors and the entire outside world. Although the town is full of houses, they're mostly abandoned by the members of the cult who instead opt to live secretly in large compounds. The only obvious thing about their way of life is that young girls are forced into polyamorous relationships with much older men. But any other practices remain a mystery and members of the cult make every Every effort to keep it that way. Number two, Auburn, West Virginia. This is your typical spooky Appalachian small town, of which there are a lot, but Auburn, West Virginia just might be the creepiest. Located right off of State Route 74, the town of 90 residents consists of a single street lined with shack-like houses, and the road comes to an abrupt end once it reaches the woods. Ooh. There's oh. only one way in or out of the wow. town. Why or how it got there is a mystery, and the people that live here are even more <laughs> mysterious. A man on a motorcycle trip through Appalachia accounts how he stumbled across the town which was completely silent and seemingly empty not a soul in sight after coming to the dead end at the edge of town he was forced to turn around and as he drove back through the town dozens of people had suddenly materialized on the porches of their shack like houses they stood motionless silently watching him he got out of there fast yeah smart move number one Skidmore, Missouri. At first glance, you may see Skidmore as just another decaying small town that more and more people are leaving every year. But this town is a lot more depressing than that, especially when you know where it all started. Over 50 years ago, the notorious bully Ken McElroy blackmailed his way into a reign of terror over the town. He literally raped and pillaged the people there, forcing women as young as 12 into polygamous marriage. No wow. one knew how to stand up to him not even the police, until one day someone just shot him in front of the entire town. There was an intense legal investigation, but no one in the town would say a word. The authorities oh. eventually gave up. Skidmore was finally peaceful for a while, but in the year 2000, Wendy Gildenwater was stomped to death by her boyfriend. Some even say she was dragged on the streets hanging from the side of his car until she died. Oh. That wasn't the last of the town's nightmarish troubles. On December 16th, 2004, a pregnant 23-year-old, Bobby Jo Stinnett, was discovered by her mother who told 911 operators that she looked like her stomach exploded. Upon autopsy, they found that the infant was cut out of her womb by uh. another lady who decided she wanted a baby. For a town of just 250 Whoa. residents, Ugh. there have been an abnormally large amount of gruesome murders and disappearances. That's why Skidmore psycho. truly is the creepiest town in America. But seriously, Ooh. you probably don't want to visit any of the No, towns. yeah, that's all right. We won't. No, that's all right. That's they, awesome. they weren't on the plan anyway, yeah. so fuel. <laughs> we'll stay right away. Yeah. Um, so I actually have a bit of a freaky story myself from yeah. when I was in America. Mm -hmm. So I was in Camp America, I think it was around 2004, and we were at a summer camp in Lake Como, Pennsylvania, and we decided to get on our bikes one day and basically uh, ride into the nearest town. I can't remember what it was called. It wasn't very big. It was just like a one street with like an Arby's and like, you know, like a Walmart or something. Anyway, on the way back, 
we there was a we I think we needed to go bathroom or we needed a drink of water or something like that. And there was a sign on the side of the road that said hotel up this way. And so we we turned off the main big main road that we were mountain biking down and we went up and we kind of, you know, uh, weaved our way up the road and it opened out into like this it was almost like a little lake. But it was like white picket fences, like really nice brand new, like little hotel, like beautiful, like boutique. Everything looked, it wasn't run down or anything. Mm. It looked like brand new. It was really nice. And we were like, I, we were just like, whoa, we were not expecting this. This is, this is really nice. Mm. And so anyway, we, we walked into the main building and like we opened up the doors and there was like, like, you know, like thing uh, like all, all the paperwork was still on the desk uh we walked through the restaurant and there was like n- nobody around nobody no one was there no walked into the kitchen the well, things were like cooking there were things that were like cooking and stuff like that someone had just used the kitchen and there was like not a soul in the entire building we were like yelling like screaming hello anybody here hello like we walked around the whole place upstairs came down walked around the, never found a soul in the whole building and it looked like it would it had been used about two minutes before we got there that's so weird. No one on the property whatsoever, anywhere. We got in our bikes and like went around to all the different hotel rooms and stuff And like then that. did you just leave? Yeah, we just had to leave. There was absolutely not a soul there. Just got, just, we were just like, that was, re- like, it wasn't like, because fr- it was the middle of the day. Yeah. So it wasn't like nighttime or anything, but it yeah. was just freaky for the, in the fact that we just had, like, we thought that we were going to find what? someone. You're like, where are the people? Yeah. It was so weird. It was like the weirdest experience we've ever had. Kind of like freaky. Yeah. Yeah. More freaky when you think about it. And you think back, you're like... Yeah, no, I know. But I mean, there was like things like literally like a pan, you know, that was like, had just come off the, the heat and everything yeah. like that. And it was, yeah, oh, man. Yeah. Well, there might have been someone with a knife in their hand yeah. waiting behind a door. Exactly. Exactly. Ugh. Ugh. Lucky I made it out of there alive. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, guys, let us know. Do you guys have any freaky stories or anything like yeah, that? Yeah, tell guys, us your freaky stories. Yeah, have you guys visited any of these uh, little small towns? Or do you guys know of other ones that are that are freaky as well? Yeah. Um, oh, another thing is I went on the ghost tour in Savannah, Georgia. Why apparently would you this, do that? I don't know. It was part of the Kontiki tour. I couldn't opt out. Okay. I would have. Yeah. I'd have been like, I'm really unwell. Oh, and they made us like take photos with our um, cameras of the cemetery. And then we all looked back at the camera and there were like little orbs like floating around. Yeah, right. Oh, it's true. Mm. That's true. Okay. <laughs> it's like... Nah. That's <laughs> true. Okay. I'm not keen. And uh, yeah, no, I'm not keen again either. No. Nah. That was scary. Anyway, guys, if you enjoyed that one, make sure you smash the like button. And also, uh, if you want to know any more info about the channel, go and check out the description box below. And we love you guys. And we'll see you in the next one. Bye. Bye.